What's going on guys, Victor here, and I'm with my good buddy, Johnny Stabile from South Florida Fish and Charters. Johnny took us out today, we completely forgot to film an intro, but long story short, the most epic day of freshwater fishing because of that one clown knife fish, which you guys have probably seen in the thumbnail. Now, what else are we after today, Johnny? Peacock bass, largemouth bass, sunshine bass, those are the main four. I'm gonna have all of his charter stuff linked in the description box below. Now enjoy the video. Don't make fun of me for suiting up, otherwise I'll smell like a shad hey man, all day. You're getting ready for war. Pretty Tools much. Tools of the trade. Pretty much. So that's all shad those marks. That's it. That's what we're looking for. So there's two There's two methods to find bait in Lake Ida. One is with the sonar system that we have here. Um, the other is uh, we're looking for a bait flick. And when you see the bait flick, one, like there's one right in front of us. And usually there's bait right underneath. All the bait just came out of uh, a big spawn that they do every year. So it pushed them all up on the mud flats and now they're they're showing back up on the sonar again. They're down deep. They're in, you know, we're in 16 feet, 17 feet of water. So they're back down deep, which is good. A lot easier to catch and uh, we don't get all muddy when we throw the net. There's a big school coming up under us right here. I'm going to get ready to throw the net. Nice one, Johnny. Thank you. That, that's what you call a Johnny cake right there. Johnny cake. <laughs> Whoa. That was a school sunshine bass. <laughs> and, and the sonar will definitely lie to you. And then we're going to move to another part of the and we'll go and try to find some more bait. The sunshine bass are, um, just so you know, they are a hybrid between a white bass and a striped bass. They're completely sterile. They won't reproduce and uh, they stock them in the lake for game fish. Yeah. So we were literally just right over here by the boat ramp where Johnny would pick you guys up if you booked the charter. And once again, I'm gonna have all of his stuff linked below. You guys can follow him on Instagram. We're gonna make a little run uh, to a spot where he knows holds some shad. Johnny cake we like to see. Oh, he's excited. So ideally, how many do you want to have in the well, John? Um, in my well, 30 gallons, I want to have about 300 baits. These are actually threadfin shad. Threadfin shad. Yep, the American gizzard shad will catch in the net every once in a while. And um, threadfin shad. And the reason they're called threadfins is, if you look right here, thread-like appendage right there by their uh, dorsal fin. Little thread right there. And the thing I love about Florida, all of urban Florida, literally on the other side is 95. And then you have, you're in nature. Like this is such a beautiful body of water that we're fishing today. Lake Ida, you got birds landing on your boat. Like I said, they're very, very fragile baits. So you just pick one up from the bottom jaw. If I can get it in the right spot up through right through the nose just like that gotta break the ice with the first fish of the day we're literally just any structure you see so like this overhanging tree the jet ski dock any dock it's cast into because fish like to sit there to ambush their prey oh it's a peacock it's a good peacock wait till you guys see how pretty this fish is Personally, I think they fight much harder pound for pound than largemouth bass. Real light drags because we're fishing very light leader and very small hooks that you can easily pull um, the hook with. Ooh, look at that one jump. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good fish. It's amazing that little hook and he's hooked perfectly in the corner right there. Uh, most times, yeah. If you if you get the right right timing on it, it'll always end up there. You see that hump on his head? That's how you can tell that it's a male. And I'm pretty sure they just got done spawning or are a about to but so pretty and you know sometimes you get them and they're really green sometimes they're really yellow and they have that false eye on their tail looks like johnny's got a big bass it looks like it ate it right next to the boat almost oh it's a big one yeah that's a nice one that's a good one that's a good yeah, one yeah man nice good job 
You can always right. tell when they get to that like two and a half pound mark, their mouths just get noticeably big. Giant. I said, all we use these little hooks, just like that. I noticed that some of the bigger bass take a little bit longer to, uh, oh, maybe not, that guy. Usually they take a little longer to revive, but that was nice and easy. Works on a good one. I don't think it's as big as yours, but. Yeah, that's another he's, good, he's really about good the same size, bro. We've been fishing for what, 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah, I'm so close to the boat right now. And we've too. already caught two peacocks, two large mouths. And we hooked up to my second peacock. I actually um, threw to this one three times, and it hit it both the first two times, and then finally ate it the third time. All right, right in the top of the mouth. Look at that. Right back into the water. And there he goes. Oh, well, that's the biggest one of the day so far. That's a good one. Rick, you gonna net it? Oh, that thing's big. That thing is big. Woo! Just about, it's all about the finesse. The finesse game. There we go. Dude, stud. That's a good one. Stuff's going off back there. That's it. That's why you come to South Florida to fish. Yes. All right, Johnny just caught this giant, big, beautiful peacock, and I am hooked up Woo! with one too. Drag screamer. So pretty. They get me so excited. Oh yeah. Big one! Look at that! <laughs> Look at that! That's, a, yeah. that's how you double up right there. Look at that! That's that is awesome. how you double up right there. I've got big hands, but that is, those are monster fish. All right guys, check this out. How about that to start the video? Aggressive, taking me all over the place. That shad slid right off the line. Oh yeah. Another peacock. For those of you guys who don't know, so peacocks are actually an invasive fish in terms of, they're not here naturally in North America or, Flor or Florida, but FWC, which is our state, you know, Fish and Wildlife Service, they actually stocked them here to control other invasive species like Maine cichlids and snakeheads. I guess because they think that they serve a greater ecological role than the uh, invasive species do. So it's a little fun fact for you. There you go. So we moved spots. We are gonna try to target some clown knife fish. Um, you'll see them all roll out here from time to time. And um, if you see a clown knife roll, you wanna cast your bait right on top of it because they stay in that general area. Uh, they roll just like tarpon do. So it's it's an easy an easy sighting, especially on a flat calm day like we are today. Um, we're right in the main part of Lake Ida and we'll see what happens. I actually think one might have just rolled right behind us. Very important to let the bait get all the way in the clown's mouth when you do this. All right, I'm literally letting this thing eat for like 10 seconds. Oh, oh, oh! Do they jump? Yes. They do? Yep. Look at that. I think we got a clown knife on. We just, when we first got here, Brookie missed one. And I literally let this thing eat forever because Johnny says they have really small mouths. We got some lettuce to get off the line. Lettuce removal. Oh, it's one. It's one. All right. Oh, look at that shine. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a big one. Wow, it's a big it's a one. It's a freaking huge one. That's a big one, too. Oh, he, my goodness. He's probably not going to fit in the net. There you go. Now he knows he's hooked. Johnny, this thing is huge. I'm not saying it. It could be double digits. <laughs> he looks like he's over that 10 pound class. Now, watch. They swim backwards. No! There it is. There it is. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Jeez. Like I said, we specialize in large. <laughs> this one probably is not gonna fit in the net, I, so. I, I, you need to bear hug him. Whatever I, we gotta do to I, get him in the boat. Go for his swim. Oh, he's going back the other way. This is what clowns do. They just, they, they clown you around. Oh. Hold on, we're on the power pole. We're on the power pole. You want me to go up? Yeah. Up, up, up. Oh boy. Uh -oh. 
Come on, okay, no, we got him. He's out. Okay. He's out. Oh man, this guy's making you work for it. Oh, let me move this other rock. Super light drag. He's right here. He's right here. He's right here. Oh my god, he's freaking Johnny, ginormous. He's big. He's big. <laughs> he's big. <laughs> I, I didn't bring you out here to catch small fish, man. No, apparently not. All right, all right. All right. That's a big one, man. <laughs> he's huge. I'm not. I'm not even gonna use the net. Just bring me his. Oh my. my god. Just, just finesse him. Be nice and gentle. Are you sure you want to grab him? You don't want the net as leverage. The, the net is not going to help. Me. I think he's hooked right there in the corner. Right. Honestly, that's good. Give him all the line and drag that he needs to take. Just take your time with it. Oh my gosh! The clown knife fish in Nocturnal, they have extremely good eyesight. <gasps> oh. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Nope. Let him go, just let him go. This is big. You're gonna be able to feed your whole neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> We're feeding the village. You're doing My great. heart is literally beating out of my chest right now. <laughs> yeah, that hook is right in the corner of his mouth. Come on, you got it, you got it, you got it. Bear oh hook. my goodness! <laughs> it's a freaking monster! That yeah. is... <laughs> The South Florida clown knife fish wow. right there. Dude, right that, look at look at the hook set. Is that the right one in caught? right in the corner of the mouth. Um, this is pushing the biggest one I have ever caught right here. This is a Dude. this wow. is a big one. Do you have a scale? What is this? I do have a scale. Is that what that is their like? that is their dorsal fin. They have all these marks. So the, right now they're uh, they're they're mating right now. So all these marks all along their whole body, this side's got them too. Um, they're all from mating. Um, they really latch onto each they other. They also they? drum like redfish do. And out of his that's all I gotta say. I think this thing is gonna break double digits. I really do. It's like a snake. It looks like a 30 pound tarpon, but it, without the rest of the body. It's just so wild looking. We're gonna get him on the scale. See that tail, how he's kind of squiggling around? They eat it and they go backwards. They kind of use that tail. And seeing this thing jump out of the water, that was pretty gnarly. Johnny Stabile, South Florida Fishing Charters. Book your trip of a lifetime for a clown knife, world-class peacocks just like this. So these are invasive. Um, they are not meant to be in Florida. There's no regulations on them. The majority of people do throw them back because they see them as a game fish, but FWC does not encourage you to throw them back. The only reason they're in Florida's waters, and in particular this uh, body of water is the aquarium trait. So people had them in their home aquariums, released them, and then now they flourish. Ooh. It's not a record, it's 11 pounds. Oh. Uh, and we'll zoom in on this because all the haters at home are going to be like, no. I don't know if you can see that. 11 pounds. 11, there she is, 11.06. They also have teeth on their tongue right here. And that's what they do. They, they inhale a bait, they crush the bait, and then they swallow it. And that's, why, and that's why you have to wait so long before you set the hook or try to set the hook because they're crushing that bait to swallow it. It's the next day. We were gonna fillet it last night and have Johnny and his girlfriend over for dinner. Big rainstorm came, so it's a good thing we got off the lake when we did. Laid up with an eight inch Dexter narrow fillet. You guys can always save 20% off all Dexter knives. I'm gonna have it linked below. Dexter is a phenomenal sponsor of the channel, so I always gotta plug them. This fish is also ca called a clown featherback, and it is really popular in Thailand and in Southeast Asia. Primary way people eat this is they'll fillet it out and then I have a spoon here which you guys are about to see I'm literally gonna scrape the meat off so the proper way or the traditional way to eat this fish is to make it into like a fish cake fish paste fish meatball type dish where you take the meat off of it um, grind it with a bunch of ingredients or put it in a food processor like with anything start behind the head soft part go down Kind of just outline our fish. I know that this fish is supposed to be pretty mushy, but as far as the scales go, the scales are pretty tough. And work our way down. Definitely the most awkward thing I've ever filleted, just with a strange body structure, real strange. Looks like this is his backbone right here. Just get on the other side of it with our knife. A lot of. You hear a lot of bones. Rib cage, right? And we did spend the majority of the day fishing for clown knives. So we wanted to really focus our time on this guy. And I'm so happy we did. This is like almost like leather right there. You gotta get 
above it. Okay, so here's what our filet looks like. The meat is gray. It is not white whatsoever. And like Brick was saying, you see all these kind of like little black things? Very veiny, and I can tell you right now, it is, it's mushy, you know? It's not a firm fish, and that's why you can't treat it. Like we always say on this channel, no such thing as trash fish, just trash cooks. Every fish has its purpose. Some fish are better as fish cakes, some pet fish are better as sashimi. Literally, just a spoon from the kitchen. I'm gonna go from the tail to the head, and I'm gonna try to just scoop this meat off. And now the thing that I wasn't sure about is to make sure that we don't get any bones in this. So far I don't feel any, but I'll tell you guys right now. This is like mashed potatoes. There's literally a backbone right there. There's pin bones right there running alongside each other. Then there's even more. All of the filet from left to right has bones. So by using a spoon, I'm pushing down on the filet. The bones are staying attached to the skin. And now I'm getting a boneless fish filet. There is no way that you would be able to filet this thing and have it boneless because there's just so many bones throughout the entire length of the fish. That's crazy. There, there's bones everywhere. When I said that the consistency of the cloud knife fish was like mashed potatoes, just for a comparison, this is one russet potato mashed up. I like this with my fork. I can literally mash my fish like mashed potatoes. This is all of the crown knife fish meat that I got off. So this is gonna go into the food processor. And um, you don't have to use a food processor. You could certainly do this by hand, but just to save on time, I'm using a food processor. And normally, traditional Thai fish cakes do not have potato, but I love the flavor of like a potato latke. And I think that when you fry it and mix it together, it's gonna give it a really nice texture, consistency, and flavor. Cause I don't want just a fish cake. You know, we've gotta spice it up a little bit. Red curry paste. I did not make my own. This is a store-bought one. I'll go with two forkfuls. That's very strong stuff. Okay, some garlic powder, fresh cilantro as well as some basil, all of which come from Brooke's garden. And Brooke actually just posted a YouTube video of literally like all the plants in our house and gardening, which is really cool. She's, Brooke is such a crafty person. She's made so much stuff in her house and I love that about her. She literally just posted a video about plants, so I'll have that link below and you guys can check out her channel. We're gonna do a little bit of scallion. It's just a combination of yellow, red, and orange. Sweet peppers. And we're gonna add one egg as a binding agent. So for our Thai fish cakes, we're gonna do a little sauce on the side. I have a diced cucumber right here. We're gonna do some sesame oil. And this is a really acidic sauce, so we're gonna do some lime juice. And guess who we got? We got Captain Johnny just rolled in with, with his uh, girlfriend, Laura Beatty. Hi. And Brooke and Laura used to go to high school together, didn't you guys? We went to school from like seventh grade and yeah. all the way through college. Yeah. Pretty cool. Small world, real small world. Some rice vinegar, soy, do a little bit of crushed red pepper, not too much. But we're gonna also add a little bit of cilantro. You guys aren't the people that think cilantro tastes like soap, do you? I love no. cilantro. Okay, good. Some sweet chili sauce and a little bit of brown sugar. So this is what the patties look like. You can do whatever you want. If you want to make them into meatballs, you can make them into meatballs. I'm sure you can bake these, but we're gonna fry it up. Not gonna lie, not the most appetizing thing in the world. And I've been wetting my hands. I've been making them by the sink because it is extremely sticky. You smell it already? It smells good. That's what that's gonna be. So note to self, if you ever try this, do not use a stainless steel pan. Um, I'm pretty sure the potato got stuck to the stainless portion, so I went with the nonstick this time, but that crust was just incredible. So if it doesn't stick this time, the potato was the right move. And then to go along as a side dish, we're gonna make some lo mein noodles, and for a sauce, poison, not to be confused with poison. Um, some rice vinegar, and then this is a little bit of cornstarch dissolved in cold water. To thicken it up. Some sriracha. So this 
is what our fish cake should have looked like from the beginning. You guys remember in the very beginning of the video, Johnny cast netted some sunshine bass. They ended up going home with us. I really wanted to try them. And what did you say they were a hybrid of? Um, they are a mix between a white bass and a uh, striped bass. So we're gonna do a light panko breadcrumb batter. And we're gonna go straight into the peanut oil, the same peanut oil we used for the clown knife patties. So check it out. Tell me that's not making your mouth water. That beautiful golden brown crust from our from our sunshine bass. Knocking out two species today that we've never eaten before. Now, you gotta walk right here. I'm going to add some peanut oil into. Put our lumine in here, but first we're gonna stir fry a little bit of red onion. As well as some carrot. Also gonna add in some mushrooms. So now add some garlic. Our mushrooms, carrots, red onion. Our sauce. This is the hoisin, the poison sauce with the soy, cornstarch, everything. Put that in there. Okay, so that's starting to thicken up. Now we're gonna add all of our lo mein. And just coat our lo mein noodles in all of that sauce and mushroom and carrot. This is just a little bit of cucumber that I added salt to, so it got nice and soft. We're gonna add a little bit of that sauce we made earlier into our cucumbers, kind of like a, a dressing, I guess. And now everybody is gonna get some peanuts. Some in there. And that's that. I'm gonna give this a mix. Now, you got a little bowl of this, some fish cakes. Brooke says the bowls do not go on the plate. <laughs> the fish cakes, <laughs> you are gonna get a little bit of panko. My hands are clean, by the way. Well, we really don't have room, do we? <laughs> there you go, my friend. Thank, thank you, you very for much. The charter. Thank you for. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Hey, thank you guys for doing all this. This is great. The only people that I know have eaten clown knife is because I've seen people do it on videos, which I know it's a really popular fish, but every video I've ever seen of someone eating it, they've never liked it. And I knew if there was anyone who was gonna make it taste good was Victor. And let me tell you, the seasonings and stuff he put in there are so, so good. It's like, I mean, you just, it's just a weird fish, so you think it's gonna taste weird, but it's amazing, really good job. I mean, I've caught a lot of these fish and I never thought I'd be eating one, and um, I actually really enjoy this. Thank you, man. Yeah. yeah I definitely had my doubts, but <laughs> it is very good, and with the sauce especially. It's very spongy, which is, I expected something a little more slimy, but it's pretty good. It's very unique, so let me show you guys. Mm -hmm. So that's what it looks like. You know, we'll break it apart. Just like that. Um, you honestly, if like if you fed this to someone who's never had fish before, I, I doubt they would ever be able to guess they're eating fish. Spongy. That's it. That's that's literally the word. But in a very good way. It's not a trash fish whatsoever. It's so much flavor. A lot of people probably think we just do things for the views, but. It honestly is very good. If you guys are interested in booking a charter with Johnny, you've been doing it for 10 years on the lake. I've been fishing the lake on and off for 12 years, um, professionally guiding for the last two. We're, we're as dialed in as we can be. We spend a lot of time fishing. Um, if you guys wanna come out, the link and everything will be in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always, and I will catch you guys in that next video.